Hello. In today's lecture, we are going to discuss about the types of metamorphism. In the earlier lecture, I have said that the, there are different types of metamorphism depending on the temperature and pressure regime which affects the changes or which causes the core drop to recrystallize. So there are different types of metamorphism. If the temperature is the dominant factor, then it can be a contact metamorphism. If the pressure is the dominant factor, it can be some other type of metamorphism. And if it occur over, over a large area, it is known as a regional metamorphism. There is no clear-cut uh, classification for a metamorphism. But here we, we will be trying to discuss the types of metamorphism depending on the agent which is causing the metamorphism. The first type of metamorphism is a contact metamorphism. Uh, this is a type of metamorphism which occurs in a country of where an igneous intrusion has been occurred. The term country refers to the rock which has been intruded or the rock which is surrounding the uh, igneous intrusion. As you can see, a small area surrounding the rock has been uh, subjected to the heating. So that the metamorphism will be limited to a smaller area where the heat can reach. Only a small area will be subjected to heating due to the intrusion. So the metamorphism is only limited to that particular area. And the, the area or the zone where the contact metamorphism has taken place is known as a contact orion or a metamorphic orion. And as you can see, the metamorphic grade will increase from all direction towards the igneous intrusions. Outside the contact aureole, the country rock will be remain unchanged. The contact metamorphism is dependent on the temperature contrast between the surrounding rocks and the intruding magma. Since the temperature contrast is high in deeper rock where pressure is low, the contact metamorphism is also known as a high temperature low pressure metamorphism. And the rocks which are formed in this contact metamorphism are fine grained and non foliated and they are known as horn fells. Close to the igneous intrusion, the, it is known as a uh, metasomatic aureole or a hydrothermal aureole where the hot fluids will have a greater uh, chance for changing into another rock. And further away from the intrusion, the heat will be the primary cause. And the uh, zone of contact aureole is entirely dependent on the size of the intrusion as well as the nature of fluid present in the intrusion. If fluid is absent, the contact aureole will also will be very small. The assemblage of new minerals that is formed as a result of contact metamorphism is entirely dependent on the nature of the parent rock. Take the case of a complex assemblage of a sandstone and shale. In such a case, anhydrous minerals such as garnet and pyroxene occur near to the uh, intrusive then in the middle range there occur the hydrous minerals such as amphibole and epidote and on the lower intensity minerals will be like chlorite and serpentine will be formed at the farther end from the contact area and when the intrusion occurs into or the intrusion pairs into a carbonate rock such as a limestone or a dolostone then the carbonate react with the silica from the intrusion to form a scarn deposit and there occur many lime bearing silicate deposit will be formed in such a scenario. The next type of metamorphism is a cataclysmic metamorphism. It is also known as a dynamic metamorphism. It is a metamorphism which is formed as a result of a faulting or a thrusting. Faulting is nothing but the relative movement of two rock bodies slide past each other. And due to this sliding, the rock which, have, which has been between these two rock bodies will get pulverized, sheared and will be formed and, and they form a new rock due to the high shear strength. The dominant factor in this catacla type of metamorphism, that is catacla type of metamorphism is the pressure and which is the pressure, the nature of pressure here is a directed rock. There is a small temperature also in this type of metamorphism. This temperature may be formed as a result of the friction and heat produced due to the faulting or thrusting. And the shearing or the faulting can be a short leaf that is spanning over some years, or it may be a long leaf that is spanning over a millions of years. The dynamic metamorphism involves high shear stress, high pressure, high strain, high fluid partial pressure, and it also includes variable temperature. In many instances, water also plays a very fundamental role. The crushed rocks in fault zones are known as 
fault brushes which consists of angular fragments of kundal rock in a matrix of crushed or powdered or pulverized rock which is cemented by quartz or calcite fluid moves very easily along the fault zone and between the grain boundaries and through cracks and fissures these fluids are able to transport a large amount of silica carbonates and all other minerals in way of solution pseudo tacklite is a fault zone rock which is black and glassy it occurs narrow dikes and veins and it is formed due to the frictional melting of the country rock and the type of rock are the millenite which are partially recrystallized rock with pronounced foliation that are produced by the intense shearing due to a large scale movement along a fault or a thrust the different types of rock formed by the dynamic metamorphism vary with the depth from the surface as we go deep into their surface the temperature and pressure goes increasing so the rocks which are formed by the cataclysmic or dynamic metamorphism in such a situation will be different from the one which is formed in the surface of the earth the next type of metamorphism is the regional metamorphism it refers to a large scale metamorphism that happens to the continental crust along a co convergent tectonic margin a convergent tectonic margin is nothing but the plate comes close to each other and collides to form some of the landforms such as himalayas the regional metamorphism occur over a very large area and generally they don't show any relationship with the igneous bodies and most of the regional metamorphism is accompanied by deformation under non hydrostatic or a differential stress condition thus the regional metamorphism is having a directional stress and thus due to the differential or a directional stress the region of metamorphism is usually associated with the rocks that are strongly foliated such as a slate a nice or a even a schist the differential stress usually results from the tectonic forces that produce the compressional stress in the rocks such as a two continental plates collides each other this regional metamorphic rock occurs in the core of a folded or a th thrust mountain belt or even in an eroded mountain uh, ranges the compressive stresses results in the folding of rocks and thickening of the crust which tends to push rocks to deeper level where they are subjected to higher temperature and higher pressure most metamorphic rock occurs in folded mountain belts or in cratonic area such rock covers a large area of the earth crust and therefore they are termed as regional metamorphic rock they arise by, by the combined action of heat uh, then barrier pressure differential stress strain fluid and the pre flow action of fluid on the pre existing rock the resulting rock are always deform that is the resulting rock will be always will be foliated and commonly exhibits there are some structural deformations such as fold fracture cleavage etc and large amount of granitic intrusion are also associated with the regional metamorphic rock something like a batholith the most common regional metamorphic rocks are slate then gneiss then schist etc uh, considering the temperature and pressure range of uh, regional metamorphism it can happen over a temperature range of around 200 to 700 degrees 700 or 750 degrees celsius and it can happen over a happen over a pressure range of 2 kilobar to 10 kilobar we have taken 2 kilobar to 10 kilobar given that the uh, depth is from 5 kilometer to 35 kilometer in depth or the overburden pressure we have only calculated the overburden pressure to develop a regional metamorphism on the earth crust which requires one of the following instances the first one will be the intrusion of a huge quantity of magma into the crust something like which occurred in the subduction plate boundaries along the western edges of south america at the peru chile trench the second one will be the gradual built up of very high pressure and temperature condition uh, something like a collision plate boundary such as a collision of india with asia which is expressed or which is uh, which results in the rising of the himalayan mountain belt or 
it it can the regenerative metamorphism can happen due to a massive movement of hydrothermal fluids through the pores and fractures within the country rock however the end products of any of the above discussed uh, instances will be the same medium to high grade metamorphism of the parent rock sometimes the degree of metamorphism is very high that it becomes difficult to tell exactly what the parent rock was we can take an example of the region of metamorphism that is the himalayan range where the region of metamorphism is happening because two of the continents which are colliding to each other sedimentary rocks have been both they have been thrust up to great heights and also they have been buried to great depth considering the normal geothermal gradient that is the amount of increase of temperature with the depth uh, can be uh, safely assumed to be 30 kilo 30 degree celsius per kilometer in the crust and thus the rock which is buried 9 kilometer below the sea level in this situation could be close to 18 kilometer below the surface of the ground and it is reasonably to expect the temperature up to a uh, up to around 500 degrees celsius in the in the given figure the dashed lines are the isotherms it, it is the lines of equal temperature resulting from the geothermal gradient you can notice the sequence of rock that from the beginning with a slate which is having a pressure and temperature which is a at lower level and ending with the migmatite at the very bottom where the temperature and pressure is so high that the rock actually starts to melt these all rocks will be foliated and that is to be expected because of the strong very strong in fact very strong compressive force of the convergent plate margins the next type of metamorphism is a burial metamorphism when the sedimentary rocks are buried to, de to depth of several kilometers temperature greater than uh, 300 degrees celsius develop in the absence of differential stress new mineral begins to grow but the rock does not appear to be metamorphosed the main mineral produced are often zeolites the burial metamorphism overlap to some extent with the diagenesis and grades into a regional metamorphism as the temperature and pressure increases as far as the metamorphic processes the burial metamorphism takes place as a relatively low temperature around 300 degrees celsius and a relatively very low pressure one example for a rocks formed in such a setting will be a meta conglomerate it look like a regular conglomerate except the class have become very elongated the next type of metamorphism is an impact or a shock metamorphism is it is a special type of metamorphism when an extraterrestrial object such as an meteorite or an asteroid hit the earth surface as the result of this heat a shock wave is produced when the object hits the temperature and pressure becomes very high in a fraction of seconds a very gentle impact can hit with a pressure of 40 gigapascal and raise the temperature up to 500 degrees celsius remember the pressure in the lower mantle starts something like a 24 gigapascal and climbs up to around 136 gigapascal at the core mantle boundary so the impact is like plunging the rock deep into the mantle and releasing it again within a short span of time that is within seconds such a sudden change associated with the shock metamorphism make it very very different from the other type of metamorphism which can develop over a span of hundreds or millions of years starting uh, from the starting or stopping of a tectonic uh, condition change these ultra high metamorphism or the, these ultra high pressure can produce mineral that are only stable at those very high pressure and temperature such as sao2 polymorph such as coisite schizovite something like this is only produced from such a set in addition they can produce textures known as shock lamellae in mineral gains and such textures as shatter cones in the impacted rock and when we discuss about the shock metamorphism there are two features which is associated with the a shock metamorphism which are the shocked quartz and the shattered quartz shocked quartz refers to the quartz crystal which displays damage 
that shows a parallel lines throughout the crystal. The quartz crystal has two sets of D line, these lines. These lines are small amount of glassy materials within the quartz crystal. Shatter cones are something like a cone shaped features within the rock. These fractures are nested together like a uh, stack of uh, ice cream cones and points in the direction of the impact. The next type of metamorphism is an hydrothermal metamorphism. Hydrothermal metamorphism occurs when hot, chemically active mineral laden water interacts with the surrounding pre existing rock. Most of the hydrothermal met metamorphism takes place at a lower pressure and relatively a lower temperature. It is one of the most important and widespread type of metamorphism. There are different types of hydrothermal metamorphism. The first one is the igneous fluids and the pegmatites. The most spectacular hydrothermal metamorphism takes place as an after effects of the igneous activity. Magma has lot of water with the dissolved minerals. But, but as the magma crystallizes, the mineral laden water is driven off into the surrounding country rocks, where it seeps through the crack, uh, fractures or cracks and precipitating the minerals into the uh, surrounding rocks. A pigmented is a very coarse grain felsic igneous rock. The pigmented contains or have single crystal meshes in something around a meter as well as the host of very exotic minerals including some of the most important gem minerals and the hydrothermal deposits of this type are also produced many uh, important mineral deposits uh, ranging from silver and gold to copper and the second one is an oceanic hydrothermal metamorphism the second type of hydrothermal metamorphism takes place in the oceanic rifts and is sub, uh, something like a divergent plate boundaries here magma seeks out in the ocean floor and forms pillow basalts. While the rock is still hot, seawater percolates into the rock where the chemical reaction takes place and the mineral are leached out of the rocks and carried to the surface where they often form something like a smoke case on the sea floor. The next type of metamorphism are the high pressure regional metamorphism. It is a variety of the regional metamorphism where uh, it is having a high pressure. Something like in some parts of the world, the geologically, the Cenozoic as well as the Mesozoic fold the mountain belts, something like the our Himalayas, which contain sequences of metamorphosed fine grained sedimentary rocks and basic volcanic rocks that contain unusually blue amphiboles. These rocks are commonly schistose and may have a characteristic blue color and termed as blue schist. These forms at a particular setting of a low temperature but a high pressure condition as in the collision zones of a subducting slab. And uh, uh, consider a subducting slabs are dragged into a depth of exceeding around 50 kilometers. The basalt in the uh, such a slab are metamorphosed at very high pressure due to the subduction. And since the rocks has been very dense and which is uh, lying under the sea for a prominent long time, the crust will be, the oceanic crust will be having a very low temperature. In such a, such a situation, the rock having very low temperature has been pushed into a very stress regime which happens which which results in a low temperature high pressure metamorphism which is also known as high pressure regional metamorphism the last type of metamorphism is a retrograde metamorphism until now we were only discussing about the metamorphism which is happening due to an increase in pressure or temperature range and these all metamorphism can be grouped into a prograde metamorphism or a progressive metamorphism where that uh, the minerals tends to change in accordance with the increase in temperature and pressure and in case of the retrograde metamorphism the mineral tend to change in from a high temperature mineral to low temperature mineral that is it is the reverse of the prograde metamorphism many metamorphic rock contains evidence of the retrograde mineral change 
that is the alteration of high temperature or a high grade minerals into low grade ones. Many of these changes involve the hydration and are a result of decrease of the temperature and an increase in the activity of the water. The retrograde metamorphism is normally produced by repeated regional metamorphism where a low grade episode is superimposed on a higher grade one. Most retrograde, retrograde events are just a consequence of the metamorphic system cooling down after a peak metamorphism has been reached. That is the system has to cool down with time and as the region that undergoes upliftment with time, both pressure and temperature are dramatically reduced. The secondary minerals formed as a result of retrograde metamorphism generally occurs as a fibrous fringes something like a fiber around the inclusion a good example of the retrogressive metamorphism is the formation of the serpentine these serpentines are generally formed due to the low temperature hydration of an ultramorphic rocks and subduction zones ultramorphic rocks are nothing but the it contains minerals which are rich in magnesium and iron with this the lecture on types of metamorphism is ending if you have any doubt, please feel to contact me. Thank you. Have a nice day.